Oh my goodness, bro. No gun. Fuck this, I'm out. Get out! What's poppin' people? Today I got something real special for you guys. Something so special it's gonna have your gameplay playing so silky and smooth like the serenading voice of Barry White himself. At any rate, we're going to go over the five things you need to absolutely be doing and practicing to get yourself out of a drop in Blackout. So Blackout is actually the first Battle Royale game I've ever played. You can use these five tips across, I would assume, any Battle Royale game, uh, as most of them sort of start you off similarly with, with no resources and you have to accumulate them over time. Um, but at any rate, moving over from multiplayer to Blackout, was sort of a struggle because while my skills would translate mid-game in gunfights and all that, um, getting started was a little rough, especially since I've never played a Battle Royale game in my life. But uh, over time, I've sort of developed five tips, and it's almost like a checklist that I try to follow anytime I go in for a drop, and it just helps me, sort of put me in a better position to sort of get in, get out of that initial drop, get the resources I need, and get to mid game and go from there. Um, so without further ado, we'll get into the video in a second here, but if you're brand new here, I'd appreciate it if you would drop a like on the video if you found it interesting or helpful, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Without further ado, let's get into this video. So the first tip I'm going to give you guys is to pick where you're going to drop before the flight starts. So one of the issues I've noticed is, you know, I'll be in a quads or duos match chit-chatting with a buddy or something, and the flight will be like halfway done and we haven't picked a spot to drop yet. Well, by the time we drop to the ground, pretty much like 90% of the players are already on the ground looting before we even touch, touch, touch down. Um, and that puts us at a disadvantage. So what we want to do is we want to pick where we're going to go and commit to it, right? Um, the second thing we're going to do is we want to know where to deploy, at what point in the path we're going to deploy from. So I'm going to show you guys a couple different flight paths here and sort of where I would drop, depending on where I'm going, right, to, to set myself up uh, more advantageously to get on the ground. So on this slide, I'm actually deploying over at Red Barn, which is directly to the right of firing range. And I drop pretty much immediately right here and start my descent, but I could have waited till about cargo docks. Um, and main reason is because uh, the flight path was pretty much online with where I was going. It wasn't like, you know, diverging to it, you know, to the other side of the map or anything like that. So I would have been fine to drop maybe even like halfway through the flight path or between, between the start and Red Barn. Um, it just so happened just right here, I decided to go immediately just so I could start the drop um, or the descent a lot quicker. Now in this next flight path, I actually marked two different locations just so you could see um, how I would approach the drops depending on where I was gonna go. And the first one is turbine. So you can see what the trajectory of the flight path is. It's sort of going away from turbine. Um, so in this scenario, I would actually drop immediately uh, as, soon as, as soon as I was able to and immediately head towards turbine. So um, before I actually drop, I would, I would actually turn right turn my joystick right to face turbine and then drop. Um, for me, I tend to get a little bit more distance in the direction that I'm going if I do that. Whereas if you drop and then try to turn, uh, I find that it takes a little bit more time. However, in the next location that I pick, if I was gonna go to Array, I could actually ride the flight out probably like halfway right past cargo docks before I even start to drop. Um, and the reason why I could probably do this is um, at your fastest drop or your fastest wingsuit, you're really flying across the map as fast as the helicopters are. And so, you know, since Array is pretty much right on the flight path, uh, you know, I could just drop mid-flight mid instead of right away. Now to round out our very first tip, you want to make sure you're hitting the maximum speed in your drops. So on the right hand side there, you can see 68 meters per second. You wanna make sure you're hitting between 65 and 70. That's gonna be the maximum you can hit during the drop. At the same time, you wanna do a free look and look around, uh, make sure how many enemies are gonna be dropping with you. Just be aware of your surroundings before you hit the ground. Moving on to our number two tip here. If you can guess it, you get 5,000 points. 
Yes, if you guess, get a gun first the moment you hit the ground, you are absolutely a thousand percent correct. Getting a gun is going to make the difference when you drop to the ground because that's what everyone's looking for. Most people want to keep looting, but the first thing you need to do is get a gun. If you get armor first, that's great, but you're not going to be able to defend yourself against someone who's attacking you. So number one thing you need to do is absolutely find a gun first and foremost. Once you've got yourself a gun, if there's no immediate threat, uh, the second thing you want to look for is meds. And then the third, I would put probably armor because I've won plenty of gunfights without armor on and just having a gun. But without meds, you can't heal from that, that first gunfight and get ready for another one if a, if a second one is come or a second enemy is charging at you right when you drop. So if I was going to order it, I would say the moment you drop, get a gun. Secondly, get meds. Third, get armor. And that should be the order you prioritize those things uh, if you can. And this brings us immediately into the number three tip, which is the moment you get a gun and, you know, if you need to secure meds, whatever, but... The moment you get a gun, you need to clear your area, clear that zone that you're in. So if you drop with other players or enemies or whatever, and the moment you get a gun, you need to go and attack those players because they're gonna be doing the same for you. So if you can strike first, all the better, clear your area. And then once it's all clear, then you can start thinking about looting. Which brings us directly into our number four tip, which is surrounding looting. So anytime you kill somebody, you know, they drop a bag and you have access to the resources within their little duffel bag that they dropped. And you might be tempted, like me, to immediately go into that bag and start looting. I would caution you to not do that, to sort of practice some discipline and make sure that you secure the area before you get in face down into someone's bag and start shopping. Um, not only will this help you, but if there's someone lurking around kind of watching the fight, you can secure the area first and then ensure that you know, you're not going to get crept on from behind and just downed immediately um, by some player who's, you know, <laughs> who's just who's scheming on, on you being down in the face down in the bag. Um, additionally, if you do suspect someone's around you, but you don't know where they're at, you can actually, you know, use the bag as bait because it does make it a pretty audible sound. So you can come up to it and open it and run away if you have to. And that'll actually draw them in sometimes or cause them to move, which will indicate where they're at. And then you can, you know, sort of engage them. Um, but once you secure the area and you know you're safe and you get face down in that bag, you know, um, loot and move on don't spend so much time shopping in there you need to really manage your inventory uh know what you like to play with you know if you like to play with frags and um, concussions then make sure you're only picking up those uh, manage your inventory so you don't have a bunch of stuff you don't want at, at any given time just kind of hanging out in your invert inventory taking up space but at any rate once you get face down in that bag just make sure you get everything you need and move on don't spend too much time looking down into it and now for our fifth and final tip, watch the zone. So if you drop and you notice that you're really far from the zone, the thing you wanna focus on is loot as quickly as possible and then start making your way either on foot or if you can find a vehicle, even better. But make your way as quickly as possible towards the zone. The zone is gonna be that safe area where you don't take damage from the collapse or from the storm. Um, but the last thing you wanna do really is, you know, practice the first four tips to the T and then get too comfortable looting where you don't even notice the zone is pushed in and then you have to make it pretty much across the map uh, just to get into the safe zone. Um, and this is gonna put you at a disadvantage for one major reason is either you're gonna die in the storm or you know, you're gonna use all your meds, all the medical resources that you've just looted trying to stay alive in the storm and so and that's that's no good because if you get into a gunfight right after that right after getting out of the storm then you're going to be at a disadvantage so if you can just practice these five tips you're going to set yourself up for success for a more enjoyable game and that's going to do it for this tips and tricks video on how to get out of your drop in blackout if you're brand new here, please hit that subscribe button. I really do appreciate it. Uh, you can leave a comment if you want to see any other kind of tips and tricks. And if you found this interesting, please don't hesitate. Drop a like. I would appreciate it. And until next time, I'll see you guys in the gameplay. Peace.